we are ready. So good evening, everybody. Um, it's awesome to be with you again. My name is Laura Kirby McIntosh, and I'm the past president of the Ontario Autism Coalition. And I'm joined tonight by the wonderful and talented Angela Brandt, our current president. And we've got some exciting news to share tonight, don't we? We sure do. And this news that we're presenting today, it's been a long time in the making, and I'm really excited about it. Me too. All right. So, Angela, for some of our viewers, um, they know that we've been involved in an intensive strategic planning process for several months now, but some might not know about that. So for those that aren't familiar, can you just remind them a little bit about what we've been up to? Yeah. So we've been working with uh, the lovely and talented Tracy Chong, who is not just lovely, but also has brains. Uh, and she, Seems to be a lot of that going around here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look at you. The, the board's filled with it. It is. Um, so she she is amazing. She's been uh, helping us develop a strategic plan. Um, we have been meeting for the last several months, uh, at least once a week, sometimes two, three times a week in certain weeks to get through it. It's actually it's been um, a lot of work, but we really, really got through quite a bit. Um, we were able to develop, you know, our vision and our goals. And it's amazing the things that we were able to work on. And um, it was with our executive team, which is me and Laura, as well as uh, Jay Lerner, Karen Boyty, Alina Cameron, and, uh, and Bruce. Because we just can't get rid of that guy, can we? I know. We keep trying, but he keeps coming back. He's like a the bad OCOG. <laughs> oh no, people are peeking at the logo. Oh no. Oh no, no hang on. No, no. I'm gonna go over there. Okay, no peeking. <laughs> I thought I could go full screen, but ah. all right. So, yeah, so we, we had this intensive process whereby um, you know, Tracy really guided us in um being able to develop so many things. And one of the things that we developed at the end of the strategic plan because that wasn't enough work <laughs> <laughs> was was a new OAC logo and it's beautiful I love it um it's moving us into a new uh era of advocacy nice all right so we're changing it and we're finally ready to uh to share but I think maybe before we do that um I want to talk for for a little bit as the old timer on on this this call um, about the uh, the old logo. I'm going to see if I can go uh, full screen here. Oh yes, I can. Look at that. So there's our old logo, um, and I want to give our viewers some sort of background and, and context on it. Um, if you can believe it, we actually survived the first 10 years as an organization without a logo. It never occurred to us that we needed one. But then when we got into the, the fight in 2016 with the liberals about the H5 cutoff, we were doing a lot more media and um, you know we were much more in the public eye and somebody said, hey, do you have a logo? And we thought, huh, we should maybe do that. So we crowdsourced it and put the call out on our main Facebook page to say, hey, does anybody do graphic design? And an amazing volunteer stepped forward. Um, and this is what she designed for us. And we were looking at that point for something that could, could communicate both autism and solidarity. And so at the time, the puzzle piece was widely recognized as like, the official symbol for autism. And the fist represented our fight with the government. Um, the raised fist, if you don't know, is actually a very old symbol. It goes back to the 1930s um, and expresses unity and solidarity among oppressed peoples. And um, you know, it's Workers. been used by a variety of groups over the, over the decades. Um, so our outgoing logos combined those two things using the colors red, black, and white, which are really common in, in design. Um, but all of this was years before we had an executive, before we had a board of directors, let alone anything like a strategic plan. And it was also before there was widespread criticism of the puzzle piece as a symbol for autism. Um, many autistic self-advocates were critical of that symbol um, and its association in particular with Autism Speaks. Um, they didn't like the color blue, which is part of why we had originally chosen red. Um, and it was also long before the raised fist was used by Black Lives Matter. 
So it's hard to believe, but this logo is now like six years old. Um, but it really, when we looked at it, it wasn't really aligning with our vision and goals. So, so Angela, talk a little bit about what we were trying to do when it came to revising the, the OAC logo. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, uh, we went through this fairly rigorous uh, process developing the strategic plan. And as part of that process, you know, we developed a mission, a vision, uh, as well as values. And these are them. And what right. we wanted to do was have our new logo align with those things mm -hmm. and really, you know, depict what OAC represents. Mm -hmm. And so where we landed with our vision, and it's really very all encompassing. And I think it really, really represents what we want as a, as a, as a goal. And that is a world where individuals with autism will thrive. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, some people are going to say, well, why a world? You're the Ontario Autism Coalition, but this is our vision. This right. is not, you know, our mandate. This is this is our vision. This is what we want to see. And, and what about our mission statement, Angela? Talk a little bit about that. What are we trying to achieve? Yeah, well, you can. Am I really about to get cat bombed right now? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or so. Our, our mission, it's, you know, it's kind of remained very similar to what we had in the past, but it really speaks to what we do as an organization more specifically, and that is to secure permanent evidence-based government-funded services for individuals with autism and their families. Right, right. And, you know, as a mission, the, um, the FIST, it didn't really jive with that anymore. Right. And it didn't really communicate the thrive part of the vision. And then when we got down to that part of the process, we were, we were looking at our values. Um, really, the only one that was communicated by the old logo was the relentless part. Yes. Um, but if you look at the other ones, inclusive, accessible, truthful, empathetic, compassionate, none of that was really coming through. Um, no, so, and you know, we remember our very first uh, minister, whose name I won't mention, mm -hmm. um, actually said, actually pointed to the OAC logo and said mm -hmm. something like, "Well, obviously they're they're pro they're going to protest no matter what. Just look at their logo." Right. Right. So. So we, we spent some time making sure that the new logo aligned with our vision and our mission and our values. So I guess now's the moment, Angela. Do you think it's time for the big reveal? I guess. Well, let's, let's, let's just look at the values and make sure that we've okay. read all of them. We've got inclusive. Right. Relentless, of course. Everybody knows. Accessible. Truthful. Mm. Very key. Yes because we, we focus on the science. Yes. Right. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. A, yeah. Uh, and you know, we have uh, Alina Cameron representing our science and our research, and she makes sure that whatever we uh, discuss or present is always honest. Right. And of course, as an organization, we have to remain empathetic. We always have to remember how other people are feeling, you know, walk a mile in their shoes. Yep. And of course, you should see, you should see the, the love bubbles floating up right now. People are like uh, dying with anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to prolong this forever. No, <laughs> <laughs> don't. It's torture. No, no, that wouldn't make me compassionate, would it? No, it would not. It would not be compassionate. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to I'm going to show some compassion now and let's move on to the logo. Let's go. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Da, 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 da. There it is. We've got a lot of people watching tonight. I'm oh, so man. glad to see. All right, so let's break this down. This is a totally different look. You want to talk about it a little bit? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what am I saying here? Hold on. So we're sharing we have... the screen now. So let's um, yeah, we have well, let, we have... let's let people look at it for a second. And okay. just kind of take it in. We're going to show it to you again later. 
Um, but oh wow, it's getting t so many emoji bits of feedback. It's fantastic. Um, and so what I want to do next is kind of break down the symbolism of this. And you know, logos are one of those things, they're kind of like vision statements where organizations can get bogged down in them and it takes forever to talk about and you go, oh my gosh, what about this? What about that? What about this? But it actually is really, really important. So let's go to the next slide now that everybody's had a chance to uh, to see it. Hi, Robert. Hey, everybody's on tonight. Oh, we're getting really great feedback, Angela. Do you see it coming in? It's so um, nice. No, I have to look at it on my phone because let me yeah, see. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing. We're sort of, we're all, we've got our script in front of us, we've got our PowerPoint in front of us, we've got our phone, this is so high tech, but let's go through this next slide here. There we go. Um, which oh, is about look. the the key features. Diana Do you want to talk through this looks, a little bit? It looks fantastic. Amazing, yeah. thank you. Oh, I like yeah. that Christina points out that the first thing that comes to mind is uplifting. I like that. I like that she gets that upward mo motion. Part. Yeah, and that's, and that's really um, the uplifting, it's kind of uh, really, works with the, like thriving right like we we want people to be uplifted and we want them to thrive mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so happy that that's seen so right. the the main things about the new logo you know as laura mentioned um there was a, the puzzle piece was a little bit problematic because of certain associations so we decided let's remove the puzzle piece the puzzle piece is gone yeah, um, yeah, you know, a lot of self advocates are critical of it, and we we want to be inclusive, right? Right. So let's get rid of the puzzle piece. If it if it's offensive to any um, group, then why why include it? And right? the raised fist is gone too. I mean, it. It made sense at the time, but I think for where we are now as an organization, it maybe comes across as too aggressive and it certainly doesn't communicate thrive. Um, let's talk a little bit about the colors for a second and I'll, I'll toggle back here as I can. Can I go back one slide? Oh, I'm not sure it'll let me. Press, press um, the, uh, what do like I do? The, thumb, the thumb button. What do the you call thumb. it? The thumb click. Thumb click. Oh no. <laughs> on your mouse? Difficulties. Oh, wait. Hang on. That's forward. That went forward. Hang on. Oh my God. What am I doing? Okay. I'm going to start over. <laughs> okay. There it is. <laughs> there it is. So let's talk about the colors and what these, these three different groups represent. Um, let's start with the red person in the, in the front, front and center. Who's yeah, that? So so the red is uh, the person with autism and right. they, they are thriving. They are. Yes. They are. Look at them. Their arms are open. And it's interesting. I, one of the things that self-advocates yes. have said for years um, when Autism Speaks does it, their sort of lighted up blue campaign, a lot of autistic self-advocates say choose red instead. Mm -hmm. um, so although we were trying to avoid colors that are associated with political parties, red is just such a strong color. Um, oh, yeah, and, and, and it's, and it's it wait, also, Angela, wait, Rosie yes. Mato says, I love the logo. When I see it, I see my child's abilities blooming and being free. Oh, I'm going to cry. That's so nice. <laughs> All right. right. So what about what about the yellow part of this? There's always and, and, and also the coming. red is a throwback to the old logo, right? That's true. We also wanted to keep that a, a little bit of a little bit of something from the mm -hmm. old logo to the new logo. Yeah. Okay. Talk about the yellow for a second. Who's represented by that yellow goldish sec section? So the yellow. Well, let's also talk why about the yellow. That um, you know the the. Uh, the we had a group of self advocates and mm. they highly recommended the color gold. That's right. Yeah, so that was also one of the reasons uh, that we chose that. Mm -hmm. We had some good input from our adult advisory group here. Shout out to Phil Lerner and Ryan Bowes. Um, they gave us some good ideas with design. So. Yeah. As I recall, we were talking about that second section of the, the logo really representing the families and the friends of the autistic person and sort of coming behind them and supporting them, right? 
yes. And then, yes. And then the purple is like the greater community. Mm-hmm. So like uh, therapists, um, teachers, um, and, and generally any other worker that uh, supports people with autism. So that's, that's, right. that's like the broader community. And so it's almost a, like a scaffolding. Yeah, very much so. Oh, Melanie Fox is saying, I love how it symbolizes the way that it takes a village to raise an autistic child. Yes. Wow. Yes, wow, guys, you, you're seeing things in this that I didn't even think of, but that's beautiful. So, and, it, and it's that's exactly what we're saying here, right? Because yeah. we have the greater community, and then we have a kind of uh, smaller kind of support, and then we have the actual person being supported in the center. Absolutely. All right. Well, those are the, it, well, and Alina is reminding us, it's also the army, like something that's present here, but in a, in a very subtle way, is that we are all united and yes. we are all moving. There's sort of an upward motion here that we are all ready to go after whatever the government of the day is doing. Um, oh, Virginia says it looks like a group hug. I like <laughs> that too. So there's, there's unity and warmth and, and solidarity in it. But there's also, I don't know, when I first saw this, I got a message of like, we're coming for you again, if we have yeah. to, right? That's, and there, and there's exactly a lot of- That's exactly what us. I was going to say. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it's, con- it's, yes, it, it's all those things that we talked about, but I also see this as us on the lawn of uh, Queen's Park. Right, exactly. We're all there and we're all united. And that's, yes, that's exactly. so key. All right, let's just go back to our next slide and see if we hit all the points. Whoops. Sorry, oh, key wait. features. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we talked about colors. We talked about movement. We talked about solidarity. There was a, a definite um, attempt to avoid the colors of political parties because we're officially nonpartisan. We made sure that we didn't use the same shade of red as a certain political party that uses red. We made sure it was actually, a dis- <laughs> there's so much about colors when it comes to designing logos. There's different names for them and all that stuff. So, okay, so this is cool. We've got like tons of, I'm, I'm overwhelmed and, and kind of humbled by all the positive feedback that's coming in the group. Um, but I also want to sort of be realistic. And so I made this slide that just sort of says casually, okay, so we have a new logo. That's cool. Now what? Like yeah, a, yeah. Logo's, a logo is important, but at the end of the day, it's just a logo. So what, what are we going to do with on? the logo, right? What else is happening? So let's go through this slide a little bit. What else are we up to? Well, we've created an activist toolkit, uh, and that was uh, our PAC committee, our political action committee. Thank you for all of the work that you guys are doing. You guys are amazing. Um, The chairs are Tony Stravato and Sean Stadden. Um, And this toolkit, you can really use uh, for your advocacy when you want to speak to your local candidates or your local MPPs you know, the provincial election is on June 2nd, that I think today's uh, 97 days away from the election. <laughs> no. um, yeah, get get out there. Uh, if you can't find the toolkit, you know, it's on our website. Uh, if you have difficulty, reach out to one of the administrators on the OAC. We'll, we'll send you one. And it's, it's an amazing tool. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to put our logo on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to put our logo on everything. <laughs> That's right. And right now we're meeting um, with party leaders, uh, with candidates, uh, and, you know, with other officials as well to talk about the platform policies for mm-hmm. autism services. Because right now is the time to get some commitments. You know, it's, it's really... It's really kind of sad when you look back to the current government and how they pandered to us mm-hmm. before they were government and you know they were opposition and they made all these promises which when they became government they did not keep. So it's important right now to have those meetings and get those commitments as opposed to just letting them, you know, talk uh, and yeah not not act mm-hmm. so that right now we're 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 gonna 
be a little bit more assertive in making sure that there is documentation of the promises made. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> Melanie's asking, can I get the new logo for my car? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's to, coming. It's coming. To Melanie eventually. and everybody else, there is new merch coming. We promise. There will be t-shirts. There will be signs. There will be bumper stickers. There will be hats. There will be, we're going to swag you guys out with the, with the new logo. That's coming. Um, now, there's also something coming as soon as next week. Now, without revealing what it is, can you just tease out some people have seen it i i know should we try to keep it a surprise i don't know i don't know i think we should Uh, i think we should because there's going to be a facebook live next thursday with like a big event so people that have told me they've seen it i've told them to keep quiet okay okay (laughs) so So let's let's keep what can you tell us what we can tell you is um You know, our political action committee has been working really, really hard on getting some sort of statement out there to talk about what the community is feeling. And, you know, before the election, we want to make sure that awareness is brought to Mm -hmm. the voters um, in terms of what happened to the Ontario Autism Coalition and how it's affected uh, children and families Mm -hmm. uh, with autism. So we have this really exciting uh, campaign starting. It's going to be province-wide. I'm hoping for a ton of media. It's, it's going to be amazing. And the few people that I know that have seen it, that haven't been working on it, mm-hmm. love it. Nice. So nice. already we're getting some anecdotal feedback. Uh, but I can tell you that I love it. And I think I it really... Too. It, I really, really think that it's a, it has a very poignant message, mm-hmm. which is we have not had any children move off the wait list since nope. the Ford government took power. Not a one. That, that is, you know, for lack of a better word, and probably a, a very descriptive word, <laughs> despicable. Yes, uh, that that was a nice recovery there. Despicable is a good word. So yeah, let's yeah. let's see how much we can tease this because there's things that we can say, but we can't quite reveal it. But this advertising campaign goes back to the fundraising campaign from last year, doesn't it? Yeah, so we um, had a GoFundMe campaign. We wanted to use those funds for a billboard. Uh, right. It would have been in Belleville because at that time the minister was Todd Smith. And we raised a substantial amount of money for that billboard, which was amazing. And we did uh, purchase, well, rent the billboard. Uh, Unfortunately, we only had it up for a day because uh, Smith's office had some connections to the plaza where the billboard was, you know, and it came down. We didn't end up spending the money because the billboard was only up for a day. We weren't charged for it. So we have that money, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we didn't use it obviously for any sort of OAC business because that money was meant to be used uh, to bring awareness to um, voters basically. Right, but but then in the end, we did bring awareness to voters because we got so much publicity off of the fact that uh, that Todd Smith had it taken down. So it was sort of a double win. Like we didn't get the billboard for very long, but we got a ton of publicity about how we took the billboard down and then we got to save all of that money. And so we've been looking at what to do with that money since, and we've figured it out and it's going to roll out next And you'll all find out next week. (laughs) <laughs> you will. So stay tuned, but mark your calendars for a Facebook Live next Thursday. And members of our political action committee who are just fantastic and they've been working so hard on it, uh, they will get the uh, the honor as they well deserve to uh, to show you what it is we've come up with. And oh, oh I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm actually more excited about this than I am about the logo reveal. I think maybe both equally. I don't know. Well, well let's just anyway. say the new campaign has the new logo on it. So That's right. I think we can be equally excited. That's right. You know what? The You're right. We'll be logo. equally excited. Okay. Because really, this campaign, mm-hmm. not only is it a campaign, but it's also the launch of the logo on a, on a large scale. That's right. 
Now, we all know that April is widely celebrated as Autism Awareness Month, but we've been doing a thing here at the OAC for the last couple of years where we've been saying awareness is nice, <laughs> but action is better. So we call it Autism Action Month. Um, and we don't know whether we can organize any big rallies just yet. Um, that's a possibility. Um, but hang on, are we allowed to announce the event being planned by our friend in London? Or is it too soon? Um, oh, yeah, you can absolutely talk about it. Okay, that. let's talk That's about it. We can, let's... okay. I wasn't sure if we were allowed, but... Um, okay. You know so... what, let's, let's, let's... Let's talk about it actually, maybe after we announce um, our new board members. That's true. Okay, so let's come back to that. So yeah, let's anyways, that long story that. short, we will have activities in April. And for those of you, and I know some of you are itching to get involved and you're like, I want to volunteer, I want to do a thing. And we've been, as we've had our heads down in this strategic planning process, there haven't been a lot of jobs to give out, but they're coming. Um, as we organize events, we will need more and more volunteers. Um, do you want to talk, uh, lastly, just about the third party advertising thing and how important actually, that I, is? I had one more thing to say, actually, before we oh. move to third party advertising, and that yeah. is um, uh, MPP uh, Teresa Armstrong, who is the uh, child critic. Yes. Um, she has uh, put in a bill to recognize April 2nd as uh, Autism Awareness Day in Ontario, because on Right. Even though April 2nd is considered International Autism Awareness Day, um, mm -hmm. we don't have any specific day for the province. Mm -hmm. So she put this bill in. Um, it's gone through first reading. Nice. We don't know when second reading is, but I've asked if she can uh, find that out and if we can expedite it. Because what you can do after the second reading is ask for un unanimous consent mm. for, to, to, to get royal assent. And I can't see any of the parties objecting to it. It's an awareness they day. They better not. We and can if, back and them into a nice corner. You, you know what would be lovely is if they did and how terrible that would look for them. <laughs> it really would. It really would. So okay, so we've things, got that going on. Yeah, and so one of the things I'm hoping is once we get this day going and hopefully Queen's Park opens, uh, we might be doing something like a... I don't know if we can fill the gallery, but maybe we can socially distance the gallery filled. <laughs> <laughs> we can all log in from our TVs. Yes. Well, they, I don't know. They may be opening up the, uh, the galleries. Um, I hope so. Well, knowing that the passports are going away and a lot of those things, like the mandates are, are um, shifting. So mm -hmm. they might be able to, to open up the galleries, but they, you know, maybe at a much lower capacity, uh, right. you know, maybe with um, proof of vaccination, I'm not sure what, what their rules are gonna be, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping that we, we can do that kind of action as well. And that'll coincide really nicely with the mm -hmm. bill. Well, one thing we know is that if the galleries are open to the public, the OAC shows up. hundred <laughs> percent. Yes. I'm gonna be there. I've been I've been to Queens Park already a few times when it was closed. They can't keep me away. <laughs> <laughs> You're a glutton for punishment. That's why. All oh, right. Yeah. Talk about what it means to be a third party advertiser. What does what does that allow us to do that we haven't really been able to do fully during previous election campaigns? So we are allowed to advertise uh, political messages. Uh, okay. And that's something that we you're not allowed to do prior to an election. Uh, because it goes against uh, Elections Ontario uh, rules. Right. And you can get in a lot of trouble if you don't follow their rules. Uh, okay. And so in order to be able to do that, you need to apply for third party status. Mm -hmm. And we did, and we got mm -hmm. it. And now uh, we can um, be out there and share our message and not get in trouble by Elections Ontario. Hooray for not getting in trouble. <laughs> so are we allowed to tell people who to vote for? No, we cannot okay. tell people who to vote for. We are, and as the OAC, we generally don't. We are a nonpartisan organization. What we can do is bring light to the fact that the current government uh, destroyed a functioning autism program, didn't develop a new one, doubled the wait list, 
Uh, mm -hmm. These are messages that we can say and we will. And because they're factual. They're factual. And, you know, people will likely draw their own conclusion that the current government is not good. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was so we're, not, we're not telling people not to vote for the current government, but we're saying this current government hurt us. Right. And you, you make your own choice as to whether you want them back. Okay. So we have a lot of work to do in terms of advertising and getting our message out and keeping the pressure on uh, on the government. Um, and we've got a real team of people to, uh, to help us do that. Um, I think some of the, the biggest challenges in, in the OAC, and, and I remember this from my time as president too, is is finding the time to communicate all the awesome work that's being done by our our volunteers and everybody in the OAC is a is a volunteer. So before we wrap up too much, can you talk just a little bit about um, the executive, the board of directors, um, and our working groups and and what they're about and what they do? Absolutely. So we have our board of directors. Uh, we finally have. 20 directors, which is amazing. We have a full board. Um, the board of directors, we meet monthly. Mm -hmm. We all talk about what we've done over the month. Um, and it's often quite a bit, you know, we assign uh, an hour and a half for the meetings. They often go long. Uh, well, not often, but usually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the closer usually. we get to the election, the longer they're going to be. Yes. Just be real. <laughs> yeah. So, so that that is a time commitment um, that all our board members uh, have to take and, you know, put the work in um, the executive. Uh, I mentioned our names before. We're kind of like the senior officers, but we're we're much more hands on than yeah. senior officers than like normal executive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I mentioned who we were. It's it's me, Laura, uh, Bruce, as well as Jay Lerner, Karen Boyte, and um, Alina Cameron. And Alina Cameron and Karen Boyte are all are both VPs. Alina's um, VP of Research, and Karen is um, VP of Outreach, and Jay is our treasurer. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's an accountant, so he... That's good. He fits, he fits the bill perfectly. Yes. Um, and what about the working groups? Yeah, can you, also, can you go through what some of those are? Because people might want to plug in. And, and Sarah, thank you. Sarah uh, kittler Poltier is, is reminding people that she's our volunteer coordinator. And so yes. one of the ways they may want to plug into the OAC is to join one of the working groups. So can you take a minute to just talk about what those working groups are? Absolutely. So some of our busiest uh, working groups are the uh, OAP working group. Uh, you know, they're working on the Ontario Autism Program. There's constant chatter. Uh, you know, I'm in the I'm in the chat group, but I can't follow it. Like I'll I'll come in when I when I mm -hmm. can, and you know, I'll I'll try and catch up. But these these um, people are like they're so passionate. Mm -hmm. They're constantly in there. They're constantly working. They're constantly talking about things, and they have their ear to the ground. You know, yeah. they're talking to parents. They know what's going on. Yeah, I rely on them to keep me updated. Exactly. You know, of what's what is going on uh, on the ground. You know, right. I, I have my sources, of course, but there are a number of people in that group, and mm -hmm. between all of them, there's so much rich information that comes in. Yeah, they've really got their ear to the ground about about what is going on right now with the program and any questions that you've got about your funding and your reconciling and can you get your second installment and what's going on with the new program like if, if you want to know what's going on with the OAP if that's where you are in your advocacy journey then that's the working group that you should join what are some of the other ones yeah yeah and we, we let that group um does more work for the government than the government does for itself oh 100 percent <laughs> yeah, <laughs> worth saying, yes. Uh, so, and then we have the Political Action Committee, which is... Um, <laughs> it's me. what it sounds like. <laughs> it's exactly what it sounds like. And as I said earlier, um, Tony Stravato and Sean Stadden are chairs on that. I didn't mention the chairs for the OAP group. It's also Tony uh, and Alina Cameron uh, and Carrie Monaghan. 
Very good. Thank you. Those are the chairs for, for the OAP committee uh, or working group rather. Uh, then we have the PAC and they are the ones that are working on, you know, the political messaging. You know, I mentioned we have third party status and the advertising campaign. These, all of those things, uh, those are the brain, their brain ch children. Yeah. So they came up with the campaign. They are the ones that are using the third party status best to the, our advantage. Yeah. So thank you to them as well. If, if you're interested in, you know, uh, participating in political messaging, that is the group for you to join. Mm -hmm. And they organize a lot of our, our political events. Like if we're going to yes. have a rally, the pack is going to be the ones that, that put that together, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay, so what are some of the, the other groups? Yeah, we also have a, a, the research uh, working group, and that is also Alina and Philip uh, Lerner, right. who is one of our uh, autistic self-advocates, who also happens to be our treasurer's son. <laughs> it's all in the family here. We're all family. We're all related. We're all family. Six and degrees of autism know. separation. <laughs> yes, and they're always looking to see you know, what, what is new in the world of research? Have there been any recent publications? You know, and one of the things that we just found out a couple uh, weeks ago or so was um, that new information about the um, incidence of autism in Canada. Mm -hmm. And we learned, you know, it's actually decreased. It's uh, one in 50 children between the ages of one and 17. Uh, four times more likely in boys. That part hasn't changed, but mm -hmm. this is the group that feeds that information to us and they keep their eye out to make sure that we know what's going on. They also make sure to uh, look at what's going on in terms of uh, research projects. Mm -hmm. You know, and in, in um, like, yeah, in like learning uh, institutions, like there's a study in York University currently, which is quite problematic. And so mm -hmm. they keep an eye on that kind of stuff as well. So Great. thank you to you guys as well, because, you know, research is so important because truth and honesty is what the OAC stands for. Absolutely. And then All we right. also you... have our adult services. Yes, go ahead. Yes, we have our adult services. And that is also led by um, two uh, autistic self-advocates, um, Philip Lerner and Ryan Bowes. Um, and I believe Gideon is uh, on that group as well. He That's has, right. he, um, he's also on the board. He has an adult son mm -hmm. uh, with autism. So he's, he, he, he um, fits the bill in that way as well. Right. Um, and in this group, you know, they look at what's out there for those who are 18 or, old, or over 18 mm -hmm. uh, on the spectrum. And, you know, uh, Unfortunately, there, I wish there was more. Right. Uh, looking at things like employment, housing, uh, any any additional new research, um, any mm -hmm. also any groups that um, you know, I, I had a parent reach out to me asking for a group for adult females on the spectrum. Oh, interesting. You know, yeah. and it, and there's very little out there, but like this this is the group that mm -hmm. would have that information. Can I just share something personal with you? I, I always felt during my presidency that that working group was the one that I felt got neglected the most. Like I always wanted us to do more on adult services, but the provincial government was so busy blowing up the children's program that that always took so much of our time. And then I started, you know, to pivot a little bit to education, but I don't know. I'm just going to speak for myself here and say, if there are people out there watching this that want to do more to advocate for adults on the spectrum, please join that working group. Um, there's so much work to be done, but we can't we can't do it at our current capacity. We need more people to step up um, for yeah. that working group and to really dive into the nerdy policy stuff around housing, um, ODSP. Um, you know, there's there's so much work to be done for adult services, and and I think that's that's an area for improvement for us as as the OAC. Yeah, un unfortunately, you know, the government just blew up the program for kids, and so we've been so focused on that, but. I, I, my goal going in obviously was to beef that up, mm -hmm. but it, 
unfortunately, we've been so distracted, not only by COVID, but yeah. the fact that, um, you know, no children have moved off the wait list since this government took power. Yeah. And that's, that became our primary focus. It did. Yeah. Um, do you want me to give you a break from talking for a second? And I'll, I'll just talk briefly about education and communication. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. And I, right. I, was, I was saving those for last because I was going to leave them to you. Oh, perfect. Well, great minds think alike. Okay, <laughs> so um, I'm co-chair of the Education Working Group, uh, along with the wonderful and talented and handsome Martin Buckingham. Um, and we've been doing some really nerdy policy work lately. We've been looking at policy and program memorandums from the uh, Ministry of Education. Um, but basically, if you and your kiddo are struggling in the education system um, and you want to do a deep dive into some of the systemic issues that are causing that, um, then we'd love to have you here. We're not looking for people who are like, oh, well, I have a problem with my kids' educational placement, so I'll join the working group and the working group will fix it. That's not what we do. Um, we look at things at a, at a broader, more systemic level. So we'll look at things like, you know, how has hybrid learning and online learning affected autistic students and um, and you know what kind of supports and services are in place and what are the areas for improvement and what do we want to see the government promise to do better for students with autism in the future so that's what that working group is uh, and is don't forget uh, the ministry's actually been reaching out to us yeah and you know we were able to provide feedback on a recent ppm that's right. So there was something called PPM 81, which is about health services in schools. It also includes things like therapists, including behavior therapists going into schools. So we produced this big nine page document with our feedback on the draft version of the PPM. Um, so there's there's lots to do there. Um, there's also the communications uh, working group, which is a fairly small one. But if you have a background in PR or um, or communications, helping us drafting things like press releases and briefing documents. So who, and those who's on that group with you, Laura? Uh, that's uh, myself and Elisha Chesler. Uh, co-chair that. And um, that's that's a group that I think could stand to grow a little bit, especially as we get in. I mean, communication is going to be kind of a big issue as we head into the election. Um, the logo is only one piece of that. Um, but we've got, you know, we've got a lot of messaging to get out and choosing the right words is is really, really important. It's, it's a struggle. And Alicia has been doing a great job with our press releases. Yeah. Um, and Alicia, I owe you a call. So if you're watching this, I'm calling <laughs> you very soon. <laughs> so we've got a huge. Uh, and, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Were, were you going to go on to the next group? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I think I hit them all. Did I miss any? Outreach. Oh my God. Yes. Sorry. Outreach. It's right there in front of me. Okay. Go ahead. Talk <laughs> about outreach. So outreach is um, a huge group as well. Uh, we have all our administrators as part of that. And Karen Boyty, who is our VP of research. She also heads that. Of outreach. Yeah. Yes. What did I say? Did I say something wrong? Research. Oh, that's okay. my brain and mouth not working together. Verbal gremlins. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I did say outreach earlier. She is the I VP know. of outreach and she does an amazing job. She does all our Facebook lives. Well, mm -hmm. not this one, but most of them. <laughs> yep. And she, you know, she develops scripts and it's just the, the work that she puts into it and the thought and the passion. Mm -hmm. um, she does it. She just does an amazing job. She also rallies all of our administrators and that is a mm. thankless job. Thank oh. you. Thank Shout you, out to our admins. And, <laughs> yes. The people who manage all of the comments and chaos that exist on our Facebook pages. Thank you guys. Blocking crazy people, removing messages or posts that are wholly inappropriate and go yeah. against the OAC rules. We would not be able to function without you guys. And so true. thank you. Thank you, Karen, for helping to lead that path. And yeah. thank you to all of you who actually are doing the work because That's you guys right. are angels, let me tell you. Well, and there's there's also, I think, a growing um, understanding on our board of directors that outreach also now needs to include outreach to 
other communities that are underrepresented in the in the OAC. Um, and so we really want to see more diversity in the organization, whether that be ethnic groups, whether that be gender groups, whether that be um, age groups, whatever it is, but just to make sure that that everybody who is part of the autism community is represented in the OAC. So we've got more to do there and outreach is going to play a really big role in that. Um, and so is our board of directors. So do you want to pivot to that next and talk about our new board members that we recently elected? I would love to because right. although I don't know any of them well, I think all of them are amazing. They sure are. And well, I'm here so are their beautiful happy. faces. You ready? Yes. Yes. Here we I'm go. So Look, Look at how gorgeous. stunning oh my they God. are. You know, you know, I was, we were talking earlier about, you know, brains and beauty. Look at this. Right? More. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it's amazing. So we have uh, Jen, Jessica Ashton from the London area. And she, she was very active in the Autism Doesn't End at Five campaign. Mm -hmm. She took a little break. She had a baby. Uh, now she's back. And we really, really actually needed somebody from that part of the province. So mm -hmm. it worked out really, really well that we have Jessica on board. Because, um, you know, right now, our current critic, uh, not quite Jessica's writing, right beside her writing, mm -hmm. but very close. Um, the current critic is Teresa Armstrong, who's located in London. Nice. Um, yeah, so it's wonderful. And then we have Sarah kittler Poitier, who has been working crazy behind the scenes anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't yeah. need it to be a director to put yeah. in a ton of time and, and energy and passion into yeah. her work. Um, but now we've recognized her on the board and I'm so happy that she's agreed to serve and mm -hmm. as you mentioned earlier, she's our new volunteer coordinator. I, hats off to you, Sarah. That is a job that, whew, it's so, it's so <laughs> it's important. Be, uh, it's an extremely important role. It's it's a role we never had before. That's it's a right. brand new role. So we're all kind of learning and growing what the role actually entails altogether. So I'm so sorry, Sarah. I wish we were better organized and prepared for you. But I know you're going to do an amazing job, and I know that you're organized and prepared enough for all of us. So you're going to you're going to do a bang up job. Well, and she's got a background in in doing this, and is off to a, a running start. I mean, all three of these ladies, right? They've been doing yeah. the work without the title for a long time. So now they get to put a little thing in their cap and go, okay, well, I'm on the board of directors. I mean, there's so many people in the OAC who are doing just as much work as members of the board without the title. I mean, it, it's one of those funny things in organizations like ours, like the, the titles kind of matter, kind of don't matter. Um, but as we grow as an organization, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to recognize um, some of the people like these amazing women yeah, on the slide. Absolutely. And Talk then, about yeah, Kate we, Logue. Kate, well, if you don't know Kate, then you haven't been watching. <laughs> <laughs> True. You know, she does, she's very active in the Ottawa uh, group. Um, she does the skits and scones with Carrie Monaghan and they're brilliant. You know, and the, the level of um, detail that they know and, and are able to discuss, it's, it's amazing. Like the amount mm -hmm. of research and the amount of advocacy that Kate is doing. And she, you know, she has a lot of connections to the politicians in the Ottawa area as well, uh, which is very helpful. And that's, you know, the beautiful thing here is look at the representation across the province. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got London, we've got Ottawa, we've got North, um, we've got East, we've got West, like this is yeah. amazing, right? We, and none, of our, none of our new board members are from Toronto. Huzzah. <laughs> <laughs> Huzzah. Exactly. And, and, you know, I, I didn't mention Sarah was also very active um, working in the northern uh, autism groups, as Kate has been with uh, the Ottawa groups. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that it's um, it's amazing that these late what these ladies are doing. And I'm so happy that they're able to join us. And Kate, oh, my goodness, Kate has been doing this for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I, I feel like we need to give these people a break, but at the same time, I don't want to let them go. Can't, not yet. <laughs> not not yet. yet. 
it just it feels like the advocacy never ends unfortunately that's true that's but true you know I... you know what makes it better is uh people like these exactly exactly the other thing that, I, that makes it better and i just want to comment on this tonight because i've got my phone down beside my keyboard here and i'm watching all the people that are logging in to watch mm -hmm. i am seeing so many new names so many Amazing. people logging on tonight that I've I've never seen their name before, and I I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to find out how you found us and where you are in your journey and what we can do to to help. It's it's beautiful to see. I mean, I'm I'm a lot of I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces, but a ton of brand new names. So thanks for checking us out tonight, guys. That's pretty. I cool. cannot wait till we have an OAC event. Oh, and we can you know right? the meet. summer picnic. Ah, uh, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I can tell you my son over this last week, just this week, and we're what, we're in February? Yeah. He asked me mm, about 20, 30 times, OAC picnic, OAC picnic. Aww. Aww. I told him to ask me in May. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've got an amazing group of people and volunteers and all sorts of events. And now we've got this lovely new logo. And I, I mean, I just want to take a second personally, Angela, because I know this has been a really busy week for you. Um, and I want to thank you for all of the time that you volunteered to this organization and all of your leadership um, and, and bringing the OAC to this amazing place that we are at now. We're ready for this selection. Um, I think it's an exciting time for our organization. I think our new logo reflects that. Um, and so that's it for me. I, I, thanks for taking the time to, to hang out with me tonight. Um, any final thoughts from you before we go? Well, you know, again, I'm going to thank everybody. And of course, I'm going to thank you, Laura. You, you set the groundwork here. You're the foundation for all of this. So well, there's also this funny guy behind me. You know. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that guy. There's also right. him. Yeah, also him, the OAC uh, OG. <laughs> can you see me? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's <pretty simple. laughs> Best pose oh, ever. Cool. Yep. Uh, and, and, if, and if you aren't getting that reference, um, it was a picture of Bruce. Um, I uh, Was it the star? I don't it was recall. The, it was the Toronto star. Yeah, it was the star when when he resigned. Um, because he was working in uh, Amy Fee's office uh, and he stepped down from the OAC because you cannot work in a partisan uh, job right. because they are a nonpartisan organization. And when the current government blew up the uh, Ontario Autism Program, Bruce promptly resigned. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually remember his words. Uh, the reason he resigned is because he couldn't defend the indefensible. And a man with ethics in politics. A man with ethics. And there's wow. a picture of him out in front of Queen's Park with his arms crossed. And it's the most beautiful picture. Of actually, ever seen. actually, that that picture is from a couple of years before. And there's a different story that goes with that. But I'll oh, just uh, I'll just leave it. I didn't to know stay. that. I have I have that picture beside my bed because <laughs> that's my favorite picture of him ever. <laughs> OK, that was okay. maybe too much information, Laura. I'm not sure, but we'll that's move on. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe it's time to say goodnight. Yes. Well, the, the other thing I wanted to say, and I, you know, I alluded to it earlier, and yeah. you know, I was introducing our new board members is we are all family, right? And yeah. whether you're uh, a director on the board or one of the working groups, it doesn't matter because you're yeah. family first. Mm -hmm. And what you and then whatever title you have, that's second. So we are all a big family and that's the way I look at the OAC. So I yeah. want to thank my family for joining tonight. Nice. And I want you all to have a good evening. Absolutely. Have all right, guys, night. it's my been OAC a blast. <laughs> all right, OAC family, it's time for you to go to bed. And I had a good night slide here. Oh yeah, this is it. Okay, I'm going to stop share. Oh, that's just me. That's just us now. Okay, so good night, everybody. It's been a blast. Hope you like good the night. new logo. Peace. Peace. Peace out. <laughs>